Hi people, welcome to the channel. So we are less than three weeks until the Berlin Wall 100. And so I thought I'd drop in with a really quick training update to tell you how the preparation is going. So first up, training. What have I been doing? What have I been up to? Well, in short, I've basically just been spending lots of time on feet, moving really quite slowly. I've been doing regular runs of up to kind of 13 miles hours and a half on feet longer, maybe two hours. I've done one 28 mile easy run along the Trans Pennine Way here in the UK, which is absolute bliss. That was about five hours. And in the past three weeks, I've clocked a 50 mile week and two 30 mile weeks. This week, I think will be another 50-ish mile week. So just getting decent amounts of time on feet. I'm taking care to manage my legs so I don't want to run into this race fatigued. So really what I'm doing is I'm just building on the comrades. I'm keeping my numbers up, but I'm staying sensible and I'm not doing anything that's too intense too high pace. Now the weather is looking like it has potential to be very hot so I'm also planning to get back into the sauna for some heat acclimation work and then the only other big plan for me is to do a training effort to prepare the mind as much as the legs so in the coming days what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and run a training run that's two miles every hour for 24 hours. I need to get comfy with running through the night and managing the fatigue. I think this is a good way to do it without putting too much load into the legs. I think it'll also be a good test run for the shoes and the fueling that I'm gonna use. Now I'm also turning my focus to my sleep as we get closer to it. So apart from that training mission where I'm not gonna get any, I'll be building sleep consistency with regular bedtimes at 10 p.m., consistent wake times at 6 a.m. to make sure I get there healthy. And finally, I will taper for a week and then it will be race day. So another big thing with 100 mile is fueling. So let's talk about what I'm gonna do for that. It's an interesting one for the 100 miler because experience will tell me that no matter how tried and tested your fueling options might be, what you can eat after 18 hours of running or longer is entirely out of your control in some respects. What you need is variety, you need sweet and savory, you need different textures, you need things that are small and bite sized and occasionally something that's more substantial. It's hard to predict what you're going to want at that moment in time. But in the past, I've been able to scoff things like a full ham and cheese toasty, black coffees. I've even had mid-marathon chicken schnitzels on the Danube, but the gut gets very temperamental deep into runs like this of 100 miles. So, so generally speaking, we can absorb or need around 60 to 90 grams of carbs per hour, depending on intensity. If that's nearly 1,500 to 2,600 grams of carbs in 24 hours at the top end of that scale, that would be 108 standard gels or 62, 51 gram Mars bars. There's a huge amount of calories to get in. In the past, I've really overthought how I'm gonna do this, but this time I plan to keep it really simple. I will carry some familiar fuel that I know and love, a mixture of things you've seen me talk about before on here. 33 fuel energy bars, Vela Forte bars, precision fuel and hydration chews and gel pouches. But in the main, my plan is to rely from food off the aid stations, which are frequent and apparently very well stocked. Now, one of the reasons for that is I don't really want to carry too much. In the past, I've been guilty of taking too much load on my pack. I want to stay light this time, and hopefully this will work. For hydration, I'll carry Precision Fuel 1000 salt tabs, plus some of their convenient uh, salt pills as well. I'll also have one soft flask for electrolyte drink and one for straight water. I'll also try and get hold of some Apple Shirlers. It's basically sparkling apple juice with fizzy water where possible. I found this is a real game changer on the Danube. It really helped getting a hit of sugar but also I really quenched my thirst nicely. Onto shoes then, this is another one that I'm still puzzling over and I won't have a decision for a little while longer, but here's what I know about the choice and how it's gonna go. I know that the carbon plate sock and endorphin elite that I use for the comrades, they're not gonna be protective enough for this distance and for this amount of time on feet. So I'm gonna to have to find something different. I'll need more protection. I think I'll need a bit more cushion and a bit more comfort. I'll also need something with a wide toe box to try and avoid I have this little toe de-hooding issue. It's a regular problem for me where my little toe gets squished under its neighbor. It blisters and it generally takes a beating and it can be a real problem for me. I'll also tape those toes to try and limit the problem. Now the shoes that I choose need to be cushioned but not heavy and clunky. They need to be light and responsive but not too aggressive. Uh, they have to have good stability. They have to offer good protection when your form drops to a shuffle. Plus, they obviously need unquestionable disappearing comfort on the foot. You'll also need to be able to walk in them without getting any blistering in the heels, something I discovered on the Danube from the Speed 2, because there's gonna be a lot of walking in this run as well. I also want to be able to get them on and off easily, so no mad tight booty uppers, which rules out things like the Alpha Fly. Believe me, after 60 miles, if you need to change your socks, you don't wanna be squeezing beaten toes back into small 
holes you need to be easy to get on and off. So contenders at the moment, I'm thinking Sockney and Dolphin Speed 3, Danube Shu, Sockney Triumph 21, Ho Hoka Mac 5 perhaps, and potentially the Sockney Kinvara Pro, which is a bit of a, a wild one. On the run testers review, they didn't come out great in terms of the kind of shoe that I'd recommend, but for something like this, they might have the right kind of balance of a high stack, of big cushion, big protection, big stability, roomy so that is an option that i'm considering even though i don't think i would recommend people go out and buy that shoe themselves for anything but a race like this so that's a little update from me drop me a line in the comments and let me know how your training racing prep and your general running is going anybody out there lined up anything scary they've got to take on let me know i'd love to hear about it also if you enjoyed this i'd be very honored if you'd hit the like maybe hit subscribe if you haven't already maybe even share it with another runner who you think might enjoy it too that would be well very gratefully received otherwise thanks for watching and i hope to see you again soon probably right after i've done my 24 hour training run i'll do a video on that in the meantime happy running everyone